Hey everybody, welcome to Normal World this weekend. You can catch me at the Orpheum in Twin Falls, Idaho with Derek Richards. Did anybody get that other picture? There you go. That's him in the juice. We'll talk, we'll get into that. Now joining us as sometimes is Mangela. Bonjourno, mi amigos. I'm feeling super duper. I'm burning hell. All right. It's and also <laughs> sitting in for QB who is in Vegas. Please welcome to the show Matt McClowry. Aloha, everyone. And where, <laughs> <laughs> where can we see you? You can see me with you in uh, Tacoma, April 19th and 20th, correctly? Or, or, Something like that. Yeah. And then the next week in Spokane. And I will be headlining that Sunday if the tickets sell out, which they will. You can catch me, which will not sell out. And then I will be with you at Hilarities in Cleveland at the end of the next month also. Where I will also be headlining two shows, bookending your weekend. And no pictures with OJ. No, none whatsoever. Shame. Although there is one of me with the OJ jersey you got me. And that was an honest Christmas yes. gift I got you. I got you and my brother both in auto. See, now it's worth even more. Yeah. Now that he, now that he's dead, we'll get into that. And joining us today, you may know him from Rambo or the TV show Reacher. Please welcome. Oh, oh, and also he has a new podcast, Mars and Mondays. Yes. Please welcome Matthew Marson. How you doing? How are you, good sir? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for having me. Thank you for joining us. That's my pleasure. Did you ever meet O.J. Simpson? I didn't, but you know what? Here's a little bit of trivia. My friend, if you if you go on my um, YouTube channel, nice plug, uh, my friend Jack Sacco is an expert on the Shroud of Turin. When OJ got caught, he had rosary beads with him, and my buddy Jack Sacco gave him those rosary beads. Wow. Really? Yeah. Look at that. True story. They, and they worked. <laughs> I mean, he prayed He prayed until he was innocent. Yeah, exactly. It's amazing, right? It's the, the power of prayer. <laughs> Uh, as you all know, what he's mostly known for is being a legendary NFL running back, mm -hmm. Heisman winner, actor, and broadcaster, uh, who became uh, somewhat known for being wrongfully accused of murder in the night. Double 90s. murder. Yeah. Double murder of his wife, who it, the uh, assailant is still at large. Innocent of murder, guilty of wrongful death. Yeah. Correct. And, and I uh, did have a Facebook friend who was very indignant about them not going over the football stuff too heavily today. Yeah, that's shocking. It's like, did you really think they were going to play Bill's highlights? <laughs> Why do you have so many pictures from his trial? It's like, that's really all there was. Did they have any stuff of him in uh, Naked Gun? They did. They had him uh, just some pictures of him in the wheelchair yeah. after he fell down On his, his way to hell. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you know he was meant to be the Terminator? Yes. It's an yeah. interesting yeah. piece of trivia, right? They, yeah, but they thought he was too amiable. Yeah, they thought it was much too friendly to play. The, they're like, this, he would never No one's going to buy him as a lethal killer. Yeah, nobody's ever going to Nobody. Play. No, no, no. Mm -hmm. Once, including a jury. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they were right. Yeah, it turns <laughs> out. They were right. Yeah, that's the one that they used to say goodbye today. Avid golfer O.J. Simpson. <laughs> <laughs> the news of OJ's cancer diagnosis uh, broke in February, though today was the day that he died and the prompter stopped scrolling. And the 76-year-old, uh, <laughs> uh, he previously said he was undergoing treatments, and this was a tweet today from the Simpson family. Oh, I thought they were all gone. <laughs> all right, he has kids. Uh, the statement said, on April 10th, our father, Orenthal James Simpson, succumbed to his battle with cancer. He was surrounded by his children and grandchildren. During this time of transition, his family asked that you please respect their wishes for privacy and grace. Uh, the wishes were immediately not respected. <laughs> uh, here is some Norm MacDonald <laughs> jokes. Or not. Potential jurors for the O.J. Simpson case were asked to fill out a 75-page jury questionnaire this week. In the entire state of California, only one person got a perfect score. Chow Ming Wu, who after the trial, plans to attend Caltech. <laughs> By the way, you can now purchase a bronze statue of the juice for only $3,395. And for an even five grand, you can buy one that Al Cowlings has kissed the ass of. <laughs> O.J. Simpson's new fitness video was released this week, and hitting the shelves next week, Simpson's newest video, Dorf on Stocking. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> the crowd is torn. <laughs> I like that I had to do this movement. <laughs> yeah, it was that very apropos. <laughs> How's that going? No, yeah. don't do that. That's not the right movement. To... Please stop the OJ video. <laughs> <laughs> I, what sucks is how much I loved him. Yeah, up until well, yeah. the mid Until that moment. Actually, what's sad is I could go back and watch The Naked Guns with no problem at all. Yeah, you know what's weird for me? Like, growing up in the UK, I didn't know who he was until the Bronco chase. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. and everybody watched that. And then I kind of went backwards. I was like, oh, he's the guy in Naked Gun. Oh, he's this amazing football player. It was kind of like backwards for me. Yeah, you got to learn about yeah. it. And everybody who ever played football with him just has wonderful things to say about him. He really had like a stellar reputation. My uncle used to work with him. Did you know that? My uncle was a Hertz executive when he was the spokesman for Hertz. You did tell me that. Yeah, and he did not care for him. Oh, he did not yeah, like him. Yeah, yeah. He thought he said he had a big head. He thought he could get away with murder. <laughs> Is that real? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he thought he was a real jerk. <laughs> People didn't like his wife, though. No, well, he said she was kind of a, a C. Yeah, he killed. He killed a C, and then was. I actually quiet. saw a story on Twitter today that his wife, his she used to get the car detailed. Yeah, and the guy who used to, he used to let her drive it back, and that she was always very nice, but he got a weird vibe from him, and that he had a statue of himself in the foyer of their home. Did OJ? Yeah. Oh, no, that'll do it. Yeah. Well, he also loved cocaine mm -hmm. party. Yeah, I heard he was a real monster sometimes. Yeah. Well, it's one specific. <laughs> <laughs> one time in particular. Yeah, and then that other time where he went and robbed people for his trading cards. <laughs> and there is that. Yeah, yeah. Turns out he was a dick. <laughs> R.I.P. <laughs> Speaking of people who I like and you've worked with, mm. right now, uh, it, you know, Sylvester Stallone, who's one of my personal favorites, and Matt idolizes. Absolutely. Him. And dresses like a lot. <laughs> often. Uh, very often. But I actually love. Um, you're in my, by the way, I just want to say you are in my favorite Rambo. Well, thank you. A lot of people, a lot of people rank it as the second best Rambo. I think it's, I think it's one. Well, I, yeah, it's number one to me. And uh, speaking of somebody who's a big fan, but mostly of Rocky, uh, that's absolutely my favorite Rambo. And it's also the only one in the Rambo up, it's the only, the only one, I'm pretty sure, if unless the last one was, that he directed. It was at least the first one he directed. I don't know if he directed the Home Alone meets the Cartel Rambo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the, I don't know. He did, I, I know that he directed the one that I did. Right. So, I, what I love yeah. about the one that you're in, too, he meets the love interest who then almost immediately gets Swiss cheesed with bullets. Yeah. Right. It's like a matter of minutes. Well, he's, you know, uh, is, there's a funny story about that. I'll tell you a funny story about that film. I've got a lot of stories about that film. but That's what um, we want to hear. All right. So... There was one moment where we had a bunch of expats that would that were just out there and we needed them to play the missionaries and and to cut a long story short this one guy that was there had when you do a second unit shot you're meant to be just like off walking through the jungle whatever uh and uh, and not really talking right so it's b-roll it's mainly like b-roll stuff and okay. while you know the main cast her off doing their things. And even we did some B-roll stuff, you know. But uh, there was one incident where the guy was, this one guy said that he needed to talk all the way through the whole thing. And he was talking, and he ruined every single take. And so um, <laughs> Sly found out and he goes, kill him tomorrow. <laughs> so he's one of the guys that gets blown up in that <laughs> sequence, you know, and it's like, Phew. just blows him up and blows his legs off. So I'm like, uh, but he deserved it in all fairness. Like yeah, but uh, but no, I mean, listen, I know that it wasn't a special effect. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, he really did he it. He got his <laughs> legs blown off out of spite. Yeah, no, we had we had a, a great time on that. That was uh, where did you film it at? In Thailand. Oh wow! Yeah, so he may have killed him. <laughs> well, you know, the, we used to get phone calls in the middle of the night, and they'd be like this: "You go, because oh, you you don't know." You know, when the phone goes off, you know, it could be production saying your, your call time's been moved up. So we'd pick it up, and they'd be like, "I kill you." Well, there literally the had knees. there literally was a civil war going on there at the time they were filming adjacent to it. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah, I did not know that. Yeah, so that was pretty much spot on to yeah. the movie. We we were in we were right there because we were right in the north uh, on the border of Burma. 
Had so. you grown up, because uh, you, like, you didn't know who OJ was, but yeah. did you grow up as a Sly fan? Uh, of course. I kind of figured. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I had uh, my first kind of interaction with him. So uh, I got a call from my manager. And this is kind of typical of what Hollywood's like, right? And even back then, so this is 2007, they called me up and they were like, um, <laughs> they're doing a Rambo movie. Are you interested? I was like, what? Did they do, do, doing a what? Like a Rambo movie? Like the Rambo? Mm. Yeah. So anyway, I get the script, I read it. And I actually read for Lewis first, which Graham McTavish did. And I, because I've, after I did Black Hawk Down, I spent a lot of time in the special operations community. It's a phenomenal mm. film, by the way. Amazing. Yeah, film. thank you. Name drop. I, I would name drop that all day. Yeah. I would order at restaurants. If I was in Black Hawk Down, I'll have the veal parmesan. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> I do that often, even it's at McDonald's. <laughs> Um, and, uh, and, and so anyway, I, I played the role completely opposite to the way that Graham did eventually. Cause I know a lot of those SAS guys, they're very, they call them the gray men, right? They're very on the down low. They're not, they're not egotistical. Mm. So, but that's not what Sly wanted for that role. Mm. But there was this role of schoolboy that originally was a Navy SEAL sniper. And I, when they called me and they said, listen, he wants to call you. Are you free? And I was like, let me, yes, I'm free. <laughs> so he calls me and he asks me if I want to go down the next day to the office and, and hang out and, and you'll love this. So I go down to the office and I meet him and he's like the size of a bus. Like, I mean, he's literally this it's wide. huge in that movie. Yeah. Yeah. He's really wide and he comes out and we go back into his office and we spend about, I don't know, like an hour talking about guns and this and that because I'm I love guns and and he's very 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 smart like very well read very smart and um, he gets up from his desk and he kind of like walks over with a DVD and puts the DVD in into the, the you know there's a TV so I'm sitting near the TV's right there he's where you are and he presses play when he sits down it goes ba 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 and I'm like. I'm watching Rocky with Rocky, are you serious? <laughs> and it was the trailer for Rocky Balboa. And at the end of it, I love that movie. I mean, I, and I could tell from the trailer that it was going to be great. Mm -hmm. And I watched it finished and I looked over at him like that. And I went, and he went, <laughs> <laughs> he knew, he yes. knew, he knew he'd nailed it. So uh, it, was a, it was a great thing for me to do, um, to be in a movie with him. I loved Rocky, Rocky first mm -hmm. and then got to love the Rambos. And of course, you know, saving Rambo's life is. I was a, it, very cool. I think just the, maybe our age, but I was first a, a Rambo fan just cause an action star fan. Yeah. And then we ended up, you know, we watched Rocky and it, Rocky's just that movie you watch where if you ever feel down, it reminds you of where you came from. Like you can watch it and just feel, I don't know. There's just something great about that. Oh, hundred percent. When you know the story behind it as well. Well, it's funny. It's uh, to bring it back to comedy, uh, Andrew Dice Clay, that's like a piece of advice he would have for people. And they like, they're like dice really. Chris and then, Rock. Then, but yeah, he, Chris Rock, Louis CK, he always tells them watch before you do your next special, watch the first Rocky. Is that right? Yeah. Cause it reminds you of like what you're fighting for, what you're going mm -hmm. for, where you came from. Because of, you know, we were talking before this, how he, he sold his dog, yeah. how he knew how to be poor, how he struggled, how, and that's a guy who, I mean, look at, he took home the Oscar. He, he made this phenomenal film and he, he did it because he wouldn't take no for an answer for him playing the lead. And people offered him all kinds of money for that mm -hmm. script, especially for the seventies. And you can't even imagine anyone else playing that role now. I mean, it's just, and by the way, I, I said to him when we did Rambo, I was like, there are very few actors on this planet that could play the role the way you did in one and do it again in Balboa and it'd be the same character. Like he, mm -hmm. and you can say whatever you want for the movies in between, which I, I just went through them with my kids. I watched all of them again and they're just great for different mm -hmm. things. But the first one's like a proper movie. I mean, that's like a indie Really, really great, well-crafted film. Oh, yeah. Well, and then I have friends that have named their kids Drago, so it sticks. You know, <laughs> well, like I mean, they, he had talked about doing... <laughs> for real. Yeah, I, I mean, people love... 
there's a reason to love all those movies, and the yeah. first one is the Oscar winner, but they're all entertaining and good for their own reasons. Well, one point when he was writing Rocky too, like he might have he made him like a union leader or something. He might have made that into fist, but it was like he was wasn't even he wasn't even thinking about it in terms of being this boxing series, you know. And because I mean, boxing it was a love story with boxing. Yeah. As a, ve a vessel for that, the love story. Well, my kids love Rocky too. They think oh, that's I, the I, best one, which is oh, interesting. Yeah. It's my wife's favorite too, actually. My son loves loved Rocky. I, I he's nine, uh -huh. so I thought that was the appropriate to show him, and it was, you know. Yeah. And he, uh, so he just loves that. I don't know if, and I did show him. Uh, uh, I think Rocky Four is definitely his mm -hmm. favorite. Yeah, the f Four is it Four is like just like a great music video though I mean if you watch it back the training sequence in that is ridiculous oh it's great and when really when he fights Drago that is four right yeah yeah, yeah. when have you ever seen the um it's a parody of 30 for 30 where they're talking about why uh the night Rocky defeated the night Rocky ended the Cold War yeah. yes the why yeah yeah and why uh Creed dies yeah he, they're like you know I think it's all the dance he was in he dancing did. shape he wasn't in fighting yeah. shape yeah they're like but I think uh it's all the dancing he does before he gets it in was the just ring. worn out <laughs> like see how Drago's just standing there waiting to fight and it's then going, there's Creed just dancing he's really winding himself out before this fight <laughs> These guys really used no defense whatsoever. It was strange. But he's, you know, Dolph is the real deal. I mean, I'm yes. sure you know. I mean, Sly said, punch me and make it make it." Well, real. yeah, he almost killed him. He nearly killed him. Yeah, he had to be helicoptered to the hospital. Really? Yeah, yeah. you didn't know that? No, I did yeah. not know that. He yeah. punched him right in the heart. I would not want to be punched by Dolph like No, absolutely not. No, exactly. <laughs> yeah. That's why I love, uh, I really do love um, The Expendables. Yeah. And how he just put that all together into just utter absurdity yeah. for an action movie. I loved it. But that's what we need in Hollywood, you know, out of yes. Hollywood right now. We just want to be able to put our brains in neutral and go and see people kick ass. I mean... Well, he's like, yeah, we don't want toxic masculinity. He's like, all right, I'll put Ronda Rousey in it. <laughs> <laughs> just balance it up a little bit. Right. <laughs> but yeah, no, I mean, look, he's a... Uh, he demands excellence from you. You know what I mean? He really does. And he works like super hard. Even in between takes, he got like, he got this stick with um, a piece of string and a weight at the bottom. And he just, and that was his forearm exercise. Yeah, he's being he pumped for every time. shot. It's unbelievable. Well, and right now, and that's why I brought it up is Tulsa King, which is a series I really enjoyed. Did you watch it? I have not watched it. It's seen the first episode. Yeah, I loved it. It's great. It's really entertaining, and uh, it, it's in its Atlanta casting company that provides background extras for Sylvester Stallone. And uh, they're saying that he that some of them left the production, saying it was a toxic environment, and uh, it was also alleged that Stallone suggested you know the production bring in pretty young girls to be around him, which you know what a monster. <laughs> um, you wouldn't you wouldn't expect that around a movie star. Just I mean. It's gross, right? Like, that's never happened in life. Never, ever, ever happened in Hollywood, ever. You no, know, and he said that uh, he didn't want the, any of the... He called some of the extras ugly and a tub of lard <laughs> and a fat guy with a cane, which was probably just <laughs> so a so it, well, with a cane. <laughs> wasn't that the role they were reading for? <laughs> I assume it was if yeah. you watched the ca characters yeah. in the movie. Yeah, that's their credit. Fat it, guy with cane. It just seems odd, though. It Maybe it's just me, but I'm just throwing this out there for a guy who puts together a show like this. Wouldn't you expect that from somebody like him when he's trying yeah. to put together an exact show that he wants that yeah. this is going to be, he's going to be blunt, he's going to be direct, he's going to put together the show that he wants, and maybe he's going to say a few things as a guy who's been, I don't know, jacked since the 70s mm -hmm. to maybe have an opinion. And also he knows what sells. I mean, so when we were doing Rambo, uh, the prop master came up to us and gave us all this gear. And he, he came along the line, he was like, take that off, move that that's going to kill you in the jungle, blah, blah, blah. I've never had a director do that to me. He knew what the the actors were going to go through and he knows what sells. So if he wants his show to be a success, do you want a bunch of ugly women on set? I hate to say it. I mean, it's just the truth. Or do you want a bunch of good looking women around you that sells? It, it does. I mean, we're living in a society now where you can't say that, you know, you got to have Lizzo around you all the time and, and pretend that that is something that you want to aspire to. It's just not true. Well, and doesn't it seem like basic, hey, I need a non-binary chick. What are yeah. we doing? Hey, good, good. <laughs> this woman has a pussy. <laughs> what's, what's going on? <laughs> so, but you... you <laughs> 
So you have that. And I just think it seems that now that you have a basic standard of work ethic and that is now considered a toxic work environment. It's unbelievable. I and, mean, and that seems to be a, a, a problem now where it's like, yeah, it, it's every day is not going to be nice. Every day is not going to work out. Every well, day isn't going to be perfect. And there's a difference between there, you're, there should be some level of perfection with that. Also, he said specifically that this is a guy who knows what he wants. And when I watch some of these Star Wars shows and things on Disney, and like you get an episode or two into, it and like this isn't something that anybody wanted. It's shapeless. There's no vision. And sometimes, like I get the vibe, I could perfectly buy into the idea that everybody there is having a great time, but they well, created something that's just crap. And also, the guys who yeah. screw him over in this, he goes away by not ratting that's the mm. whole idea and a lot of them when he gets out are fat old guys with canes and he's just been getting jacked in prison for yeah. the last 15 years so i would imagine even getting into that character he's trying to play this mobster trying to come back and they want to put a hit out on him even though he went away for not saying you know he could have easily just gotten away with it but he he stuck true to the mafia code that was the whole idea I don't know. I think it's strange. I think that it's just like, yeah, this was the, it's called a script. I know. Well, I'm just reading that. Yeah, he like, could call me whatever he wanted. If he was like, hey, short, fat ass, I'd be like, what up, Sly? <laughs> <laughs> we shooting today? <laughs> Look, so here's the kind of thing that it, that happened to me, right? Yeah. So again, we're on set and we're going down the river on this boat, right? And he's like, bah, 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 bah. there's it's just a, it's a nightmare to film on, right? Cause you've got boats around you. Cause you've got your sound guys on the boats and everything. And he goes to me, he goes, Hey Matt, uh, say this line. And he gives me a line and it's a terrible line, right? It's just like a clunky line because it came into his head and he wanted me to say it. And I was like, Oh, okay. And I'm sitting there going, this does this feels weird. And a lot of the times like an American phrase thing does not work for a Brit, right? So I, I'm in my head, I'm like, that doesn't work right for me, right? But I'm like, I'm, I've got to do it. The camera's on me. And he goes, um, all right, say the line and action. And I, I turn to him and I say the line. I think it's the line that's still in the movie. Uh, they call me schoolboy that, you know, and uh, he goes, cut. And I'm not going to do a sly impression. I can't do one, so you can do one. Well, I can't really do one either. Uh, I was but, sort of just mumbling. Yeah. But he, go, he goes, any more ham and we'd have a sandwich. Do it again. <laughs> and I went, oh, just been dissed by Stallone. Like, that's bad. So so I'm sitting there. I do it again. He goes, good, we got it. Cut, cut to six months later. I'm in ADR with him. And we get to that part and we've got to ADR the whole thing because there's a, you know, brrr, the boat sure. over it. So we've got to redo it. And he loves doing that, right? Because he's really good at ADR. And I, and I go, uh, I went, hey, I said, do you remember what you said to me at this point? And he goes, no, what? He couldn't remember. And I went, you said any more ham and we'd have a sandwich. And he burst out laughing. He goes, hey, I've made more sandwiches than anyone else in Hollywood. <laughs> no, so he's just, you, you got to give it to a guy that demands perfection in every single thing that he does. And he's getting on now and he still wants perfection in his show. He could be just picking up a check. He's still alone. He doesn't have to care that much, but he does. Like he so, knows he's the guy who made "Stop or My Mom Will Shoot." You know, he's not. A, well, him. We were just looking at Norm <laughs> McDonald. Yeah, exactly. The sketch he did with Norm, if where he's in the car accident. Yes, and mm -hmm. he's all he can. And he, he comes to save him, but all Norm wants to talk about is all the horrible movies he's done. <laughs> and yes. and Stallone allowed him to, where he's just he literally gets out of the, the car. The only thing he didn't want him to every do every bad movie that Stallone's ever made. He's a funny guy. Right. He's the only thing, a funny guy. Yeah. It was the only thing he said to Norm. He's like, "Hey, could you lay off Frank a bit?" Yes. Yeah, just a bit for Frank. He's like, it's a non sequitur. And he's like, you don't get it. Frank's had a hard time. Like he said, like, <laughs> he thought he was a boxer after Rocky came out and then every fighter in Philadelphia beat the shit. <laughs> <laughs> so Frank's not right. So yeah. Just give him a break. He was one of the best. He was one of the best hosts they had too. Yeah, he's amazing. He's, like, he's such a good. Yeah, yeah he was the orange Julius sport. guy who had to stay and work at a computer store when yeah, it changed. He's like, right. he's like, you want to buy computers for gays? He's like, did you say this computers for gays? That's <laughs> yes, gays. Gays. <laughs> it's a. It's not a computer. It's a vending machine. Yeah. <laughs> That's fine. Yeah, he was. I think you should buy the machine. 
I think people are too sensitive, though. Yeah, exactly. It's just ridiculous. Well, and that's what I think it is. And if you're working with somebody who's especially an older action star and somebody who is demanding perfection, or at least trying to make something that's entertaining and good, why would you assume? I, I don't. I don't get why you why you wouldn't want to, and why you wouldn't want. Wow, I've burped twice. Thanks. Huh? <laughs> why, thanks. I had chugged a monster. My apologies. Um, but why wouldn't you want to learn from that? I, listen, I listen to him every day on set. I was never offended by anything that he said, no. ever, ever. And um, I just think people are snowflakes, to be honest. You, you know, to to me, you know, it's like you said, it's kind of that thing like, slap, oh, Stallone hit me. I'll never wash that face again. <laughs> you know, because he's a legend. I mean, the, you don't use, oh, well, legend is used too often. Yes. He's a legend. He's a legend. And that's why I said, if if I never make another movie ever again, I did Rambo with Sylvester Stallone and I saved his life and he directed me in it. That's it. I, I win. I'm, I'm in the zone. What was it? Were, were you ever on a set that you thought to be hard? I mean, not in the sense of like emotionally or that way, but th what was the hardest shoot you think you were ever? A grueling? On? Yeah, like a grueling shoot. You know, look, I come from a, a really tough working class background. So for me, every single time I went to those sets i was like oh, just so lucky to be here and i genuinely mean that even when they were really rough and and rambo was tough i mean we were we were in the jungle i said we were mm. we were in the jungle but it seemed to me that at the beginning of my career i always got asked to go to these exotic places which people think oh that's great but like when you're in the jungle for mm -hmm. forever i mean when i did anacondas i got electrocuted on set which was kind of funny there was oh. a i was so I'm, I'm sitting in my chair um and it's like four o'clock in the morning and people think oh, oh you know movie stars but it's actually it's really grueling because you have to like stay focused you know you have to keep on and and very often it's very very long days i mean it's not gritting roads or digging ditches, mm. right? But, you, you know, it's still got its own pressure. A lot of hurry up and wait. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. And so I'm there and I'm really tired, right? And and I go, oh, okay. Okay, I've got to go on to set. And, I, and there's this light there and I didn't realize that it was bare wires. Oh, and, it, and they'd been like putting a rain uh, machine down and I went <gasps> like that and I was like, did I just get electrocuted? <laughs> That's really weird. And then, so later on that day, they had to rush me to hospital. I was like two hours away. And literally, dude, this is, I've got to tell you this because this is unbelievable. I'm in Fiji and they're pushing me, the white guy, in, in, a, in a wheelchair to the front of the line because I had to go to the, the main hospital, which was for everybody. And there was literally people with their arms hacked off. <laughs> I was going past them. I was like, sorry, sorry. It's your rules. Sorry. You, you know, so movie star getting? coming in, movie actor coming in. Like, I'm sorry that, you know, you got your arm hanging off, but uh, uh, it was embarrassing. It was really embarrassing. Turned into the 1940s Montgomery, Alabama. <laughs> Yeah, it was it was pretty bad. We, oh, we did a, I did a, I did a film in China that was kind of tough just because the food was so bad. Really? Oh, it was just unbelievable. What one? It's called DOA. It oh, was, oh, okay. yeah, 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 it was, for sure. Yeah, it was based on a, a yeah, game, yeah. the game, yep. and we all thought it was going to be the. Look, Michael Caine said to me, "You never set out to make a bad film." Right. Right. And which is great advice from Michael King. The guy who made Jaws the Revenge. <laughs> yes. Do you know what? Can I tell you a story about that? I literally was doing a press conference with him. I did my first movie with him. Mm. And I had to do a press conference before I did the film. Yeah. And I'm I'm sitting there and I'm like, it's Michael Kane, right? And uh this journalist stands up and he goes, Michael, it's in England, Michael, Jaws for the Revenge. <laughs> <laughs> what about your art? And Michael Caine goes, without missing a beat, he goes, do you know, I look at the Picasso I have on my wall that I bought with the money from George for the Revenge, and I say, that's my art. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, and the guy was like. Well, yeah, what he said was, in interviews, was like, I've never seen it. I heard it's quite bad, but the house that it bought me is wonderful. <laughs> yeah, yeah he's a, and he's another one. Super hard worker. 
He worked. I mean, he just. That's, well, that was another working class guy. His father. It was funny because his fa- He died. He got a kind of a later start in acting relative to his time, right. and uh, his father died before he had made it. And apparently, I remember the story I had heard. His father was such a man's man that he never ate chicken because he thought it was sissy food. Wow! And so he died of like <laughs> colon. He died of colon cancer like early on. Oh, I would and, assume. But he died. Before Michael had made it as an actor, but when he told him he wanted to be an actor, that was akin to telling him that he was gay. <laughs> and he died as as a failed actor when his Michael was still a failed actor, but he was married with a child. So it was like he's at least he had that. Yeah. Well, Samuel Jackson was that as yeah. well. Like once he got sober, his whole thing was he always wanted to work just as hard as his dad. So he's like, Yeah, you know, he's like, Yeah, I do every single thing that's handed to me, including credit card commercials. Right. But he goes, I work almost every day of my life because so did my father. And I think that's very noble. Yeah, me too. Well, me my too. my favorite one was the one uh Eric Roberts, when he did I love the, Oh For Us. Yeah, he did for the me, movie, Your Friends ours. movie. Yeah, Eric Roberts, a uh, friend of Ken, actually. No. Yeah, it was. No. You, you don't remember? Oh, not anymore? No. Oh, well, at one time. <laughs> uh, yeah, but anyway, he came in to be part of a movie, and he's like, well, I can only shoot it on Christmas Eve. And I got to interview Eric, and I really, really like that dude. Is that like his rule? <laughs> like, yeah, you can only yeah. ever shoot on Christmas Eve? Well, it was like so the, he's got one day you can yeah, get him? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, it was like the only day where he's not booked, because he does everything. Yeah. And he just said, I can only shoot on uh, Christmas Eve, and he came and realized they had no budget, did the did the scene. I think and that was John Anton. It was John Anton, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. Yeah, when they went to the, he's like bringing him to the airport, he's like, wait, what do I have to pay you and he's like you can just buy me an omelet so the uh, doa was with eric yeah and then i just did one my, the next movie that i did that's coming out on uh, um may 31st is with eric oh, wow. so i did two with him he's great mm-hmm. i really really like that dude and yeah. i also i mean uh, I almost say I did a movie and like Eric was in it. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. It's hard. It's hard if you've been in movies and yeah. not done at least two with Eric Roberts. <laughs> but I love Pope of Greenwich Village. Yeah. I just like the, the, the one year he's in uh, The Dark Knight and a talking cat question mark. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I saw him leave a gym once. That's I saw Eric Roberts leave a gym. Oh, yeah. That's I my just story. hit him up during the pandemic because I'm like, I'm a big fan. I like to interview you. And he got back to me in like five minutes. And yeah. I was like, this is awesome. <laughs> Yeah. How many eggs did he eat? Uh, I, he did it just for free. I didn't even have to send him an omelet. Wow. <laughs> wow. And his wife was super cool. Yeah. Yeah, they're really nice people. Yeah, it was uh, It was quite something to, you know, like I said, it, it, when you're in those difficult environments, like you go over to someone like China, and DOA was one of the first movies to shoot over there, like in Western movies to shoot over there. So we were kind of like experiencing everything. So for example, like, you know, when you normally shoot and you hear like a clunk, clunk, right in the background, you stop and you're like, okay, we've got to go again. Well, where we filmed, it was a dirt floor and they would just drill in the middle of the scenes. So after a while we were just like, you know, cause initially you'd stop you go, uh, uh, Sounds like Blaze Studios. Are they going to stop? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, are they going to stop? And they were like, no. And we're like, oh, okay. So we just had to, you know, go through the whole thing. And we all lost about 30 pounds on that. Oh. Each. What what part of China were you in? We were in Guilin. Then we went to Hangzhou. Then we went somewhere else. And then we ended up in Hong Kong. And, and when we got to Hong Kong, we went to, I think it was Morton's, because none of us had eaten a decent a decent meal in like three months and it was like just everything you know like we just (laughs) so uh but that was a that was a rough shoot it was just difficult but the good thing about it is in those environments you're in a pressure cooker environment so they're just like you know you shove together so you make really good friendships yeah that's at least a nice thing yeah what's what was your most challenging character oh that's a great question um I think the one, I'd say the one with the most pressure okay. was playing Dale Sizemore in Black Hawk Down because it was my first big Hollywood film and it was a real guy and it was a, an environment where guys had died. Uh, and that was pre 9 11 when we shot that. Right. So there was a lot of pressure. And it's like Ridley Scott, you know, you go on set and you're like, I mean, you have Tom Hardy, you have, uh, yeah. I mean, you had, and it was even before it was Tom Hardy, but you could still see the talent and you had, yeah. uh, I mean that 
there's just an endless amount of stars in that movie. Yeah. What did you find to be most impressive? Like really the most intense actor that you just thought really owned that movie? Well, you know, I think when you're on set, it's funny because that was a, a film where they got all the up and coming young talent in it, right? Absolutely. So when you're there, you're like, you don't know. Yeah. They're just the same as you, you right. know? And, and the truth of the matter is, and I've said this, uh, I've said this before in interviews, you have like everyone in Hollywood really that makes it is around the same level. It's just that there's a couple that aren't, and I'll tell you who those are in a minute, but there's a couple that I look at and I'm like, oh, you guys are just so far ahead of everybody. Um, but for the most part, you're all at, at a certain level and you might hit with a director that pushes you to the next level. Like Tom, Tom takes really good roles, but also he works with Christopher Nolan uh, and, and these other people. So he gets the opportunity to, to do it. And he's brave enough to go there, right? So he's, he's very good. Um, but I mean, I, I was working with Eric Banner a lot on that. He's my scenes, And I saw Chopper. So Chopper is the best dude. I swear to, if people have not seen that movie, that is uh, anyway, sorry. He's I, crazy. I, good. I got excited, but he's so good in that movie. So, so I'm doing this film, right. And I see Tom and I see Nikolai Waldau and Johnny Strong and Ewan, Ewan, we knew, um, Ewan McGregor and Bremner. Uh, Josh Hartner. I mean, yeah. Josh had just come out with, he was the new kid on the block. He just done Pearl Harbor. Right. Um, but I'm paired up with this Aussie comedian called Eric Banner. Mm -hmm. And I go home in my break and I watch this movie Chopper and I'm like, wow, that is a career defining performance. He is off the hook incredible in that film like i and i went back and i went eric you're gonna be a giant star dude like you're gonna work forever because that was another level and he was if you haven't seen chopper you should really see it's it's he's unbelievable a, he is a monster he's unbelievable in it and i said you'll work forever and uh i, I was with him i was in the car i was with him when he got the call from ang lee to do the hulk so okay and, and at that point you're sitting there and you're like hang on a minute, like last year I was doing all the normal things and now I'm on set getting calls with this guy. I was getting calls from all these different directors. And so it's really, um, when you do something like that, you never know who's going to pop. But what I was saying before is I think that Daniel Day-Lewis is on a, he's in a different category to everybody. Mm. And then you got like below him, I'd say, just a little bit, Gary Oldman, Denzel, Tony Hopkins. Yeah, Denzel is just somebody who, if he's in it, I'm going to watch it. There's, yeah. a, there's a magnetism. Yeah. And then Gary Oldman is the only white guy that can play a Detroit pimp, even <laughs> though he's, you know, he's Gary Oldman. Yeah. He's just a different, yeah, he's a different mm -hmm. level of actor who's just fascinating. It's so like, even in the Batman movies, like he's the best Gordon ever, but it was also a totally different approach than I would have anticipated. Very subdued. Yeah. That's a guy, it's a guy who's not, he's not gruff. He's not like physically imposing, but there's a strength of that character, you know? It's almost that he's tolerated it for so long. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I went, I, I did a, um, I did an award show, like I narrated an award show in Hollywood and uh, Gary turns up because he's got he's he's winning the Lifetime Achievement Award or whatever, and he sits next to me, and I'm like, oh. you know, because every now th th those guys, it's like meeting Sly. It's like I looked up to him for such a long time. Gary, you know, True Romance, just ridiculous performance. Um, it, Leon, the professional, unbelievable performance. I mean, I, I watched that movie a thousand times. That's part of the movie by far. Uh, so. He's amazing yeah. in that. And he sits next to me and he's all like, oh, what was that you said? What did you just say there? And like super skittish, like, and I'm like, this is Gary Oldman, dude. <laughs> they go, okay, Gary Oldman wins. He gets up, boom, he's on. <laughs> like switched on, totally confident, gives the greatest speech ever. And then comes and sits down again. And I'm like, what was that? Like, that was unbelievable. He's like, just, may, I, may I sit? Yes, <laughs> may I sit? <laughs> oh, awesome. Everyone. Remember, you know what's funny? So his manager, 
Doug Abansky said, do you remember in the film in, in The Professional where he takes the pills and he goes, and oh, absolutely. Like shot on top. People used to call up and say, what was he taking? Yeah. And it wasn't anything. I mean, it was like some candy, of course. Right. Right. And, but he said he gets asked that all the time. Well, it's so perfectly acted that you believe. And, but he's so good at that. Mm -hmm. Even, I remember the first time I saw True Romance knowing who Gary Oldman was and not having a clue that was him. Yeah. Like I found out a year later that was him. And that's because I was younger and getting more into those films. And that was, uh, that was Tony Scott, right? That was Tony yeah. Scott, yeah. And that was just, but yeah, I know I'm pretty, but I am pretty as a pair of titties. And he's just eating the Chinese food. It just is brilliant. But with Ridley, I guess I do have some questions. How is it working with Ridley Scott? He's amazing. I mean, he's uh, super chilled out. So he, he'd come up to us. Dude, we're talking about a legend. Oh, yeah. I mean, what what was funny was, so I, all of us that went in for Black Hawk Down had to read uh, Durant. Okay. Yeah, you know, that was the part we read for. And then they called up. So I went and read for it, Bonnie Timmerman. And then they said, uh, Ridley and Jerry want to meet you tomorrow. And I, after I shat my pants, I was like, okay. Because it's like, Ridley Scott and Jerry Bruckheimer, I've got to go and meet them. Are you serious? Like, I loved all Jerry's movies. I loved oh, yeah. Ridley's movies. And so I go and it was just a chat. Um, but what Ridley does well is he does great casting. So in a movie like Black Hawk Down, you needed, because people say, well, why are there so many British actors? Mm -hmm. Well, because we hit our marks and we say our lines when he wants them to do it. And when you've got such a big thing like that, so many moving parts, he wants you to hit your mark and not worry about being out of focus or not being in the right place. And, and so he'd come up and he'd go, um, Matt, right? I'm going to shoot this scene. Hmm? Okay. Uh, you're going to run down there, right? There's going to be an explosion. Boom. <coughs> okay. And then he'd walk off and we'd be like, wait, wait. Uh, uh, and then be like, rolling. And then off you go. <laughs> Action. That was it. And so he knew. So all those reactions are real because they were proper special effects that we, we had bullet hits that went, you know, like 2000 bullet hits. And so you'd run down, it was like, pow, 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 pow. and you're sort of not aware of where they are. We, we kind of know roughly where they are. Cause they're like, like a, but there's that, uh, we don't know. Of surprise. We don't know. It's yeah. like, Oh, we're doing this. Sure. Yeah. And then they have like, they had guys with paint guns with dirt balls. So they shoot at you and you just got, and you get hit like, you know, so all those reactions are real. And then, uh, the when they sent the RPG down, that was on a piano wire. Yeah. So they go, and it go, and that would blow up. And the and the man, we used to at the end of the day, we'd be stinking of this. It's like this black, it's like little black rubber stuff, mm. and they'd put it all like pack it down into these big tubes and just go. Do you remember that bit where <laughs> in Tropic Thunder, it's like yes, you guess. It is. He's like, bear, 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 bear. It was like that. And um, so all, all those things are were really real. And that's why that movie was. Well, it was, felt very real. I very much bought it when I watched it. And I didn't even. It still I, holds up a yeah. lot. I was watching it on a plane recently, which is a oh, terrible place yeah, to watch that movie. You don't watch Black Hawk Down yeah. on a plane. <laughs> yeah, <by> the way. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it really, it just holds up completely, which yeah. I do love about those movies that are stylized, but then hold up years and years later because it is shot with such a specific style. Well, he's, he made that movie like a painting and I, I was sitting next to him one day and he's doing his own storyboards. So for those of you who don't know, like, you know, normally when you do a film, you mm -hmm. have some an artist come and do the storyboards. Ridley does his own because he was a fine artist. Few people do their own. Does Nolan, Nolan does his own? Somebody does his own. His, his, his own storyboards? Yeah, I believe, I believe so. Nolan does. Yeah. I, but there's levels, right? Like, I could do my own, but it'd be like two stick figures yeah. like, eh. <laughs> Ridley's there and he's, I remember I was sitting next to him when he did the shot. Do you remember when the little birds go around the corner? It goes, T -t 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 yeah. and they're all staggered in line. He was sketching that and it is exactly the same as his sketch. Wow. Exactly the same. Oh, that's incredible. Yeah, he's and it's just super calm when everyone else is like chaotic because there's, we had a, we had, um, Four little birds, four black hawks, and two. I'm not sure whether they were Hueys or Bell Rangers. So, if you've never been around that many helicopters, that's like the end of the world is coming. And so, he's just completely calm all the way through it. Well, yeah, I was going to say, when you work with a director, I would imagine like that, who has uh, is such a giant reputation and such a, a body of work, 
do I'm sure there's different leagues of how they make you feel on set. Does he make you feel comfortable? Because oh, I mean, yeah. I'm sure some might do the opposite on purpose. Yeah, I think that again, you know, Ridley's he has a big picture mentality. You know, where some people might want to get in and and really motivate the actor. Um, like I said, Ridley, I think he goes and he gets the best actors and he puts them in the role. And in our experience anyway, he just let you get on with it. If there was something that you didn't, he didn't like, he would come in and adjust you. But the, it's kind of like the the work he's done in the preparation and getting the right people, really making sure the roles fit. And then off you go. Uh, I, I've been very fortunate. I've never really worked with a director that's made me feel uncomfortable. I mean, I don't know if it's because I got a bit of a thick skin. Well, he right. also he also wasn't Shelley Long in The Shining. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I mean, you know, I've I've heard did, did of Weinstein producing. <laughs> I, I'll, I'll give you a Stallone. I, I'll, I'll give you a Stallone uh, story though. He told me that he was doing. Do you remember Escape to Victory? Yes. yes. Okay, so he he argued with I think it was John Huston was the director. Like he argued with John Huston a lot on that, and he told me that. One day he said, okay, this is going to be the end of the shot. You're going to escape and just keep running. And I'm going to do this long shot, long, long, long shot. So just keep going, keep going, keep going into the distance. And that's going to be the shot. So Sly so goes, he was out and he was running and he was running and he was running. He was like, this is long. And he just kept running, 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 running. And he stopped and turned around and everyone was packing everything away. Yeah. And he just, he just didn't, they, they didn't like each other. So he was, you know, giving him the finger basically. <laughs> but I've been really lucky. I, I've never had that. I think that um, it all depends on your approach when you come to the, come to set and, and how you, how you carry yourself. You is, know. Well, I think you're also yeah. a big dude for an actor. <laughs> you're a big guy. <laughs> yeah. But you do come off very friendly, though. You come off very friendly. Yeah. Which can yeah. also, you know, I'm sure that if somebody's enough of a jerk, they can yeah. take that the wrong way. They can, but I, I just, I don't suffer them. Smart. You know what I mean? I mean, like, like I'm, I'm always very pleasant, you know, um, because there's no reason not to be. Mm. You know, a meat puppet yeah. mm. is making a, a lot of money doing pretend and you know which is awesome so why not be great no i get it i sit here and talk to actors yeah it's, it's really good it's, it's pretty cool better than a job <laughs> it's pretty amazing <laughs> isn't it amazing yes. I, I i'm always i'm always grateful that's why i think that i look at every set as an opportunity you know what i mean and, and when i look back as you get older you do look back and you go oh my god i did that like really i did that like, that's crazy but in the moment you don't think about it mm -hmm. just like okay i'll get an opportunity to do something i'll go do it is there any um director you want to work with or character you might want to play i guess that is a two-part question i'm too old to play it now but i always wanted to play bond oh i think you could uh well my back probably wouldn't stand up to i'll be like oh uh, but um I, I wouldn't want to play a woke bond i'd want yeah. to play like uh, the, real deal. the real deal and um not, not the one who's hanging out with octopenis <laughs> yeah, no, not octopenis no that would suck i'm penis galore uh, yeah. <laughs> of course you are <laughs> no i mean i i, uh, I want to do this sketch now the next time yeah <laughs> that would be amazing just a woke bond. gonna write it a woke bond um <laughs> Uh, so I think, who would I love to work with? I mean, I, I, I worked a little bit with Christopher Nolan. Uh, I did a little bit on a, on a Tenet. film with him, just a little bit. Tenet? Tenet, yeah. Yeah, Tenet. Yeah, I did that. But that was just like, they called me up and they were like, hey, we need someone who's tactically, tactically proficient to come in and say these lines. And, and when you get there, I was like, this is a giant set with lots going on. And I'm like, oh, and we were all wearing gas masks, so nobody could tell. Doctor, no means no. I'm sorry. I'm still honest. <laughs> uh, apart, from when, apart from when it means no, <laughs> Doctor, no. Um, I think Spielberg. Oh, that'd be amazing. Because I, I just, I love his movies. Um, I think he's, he's another level. So I, I'd really love to work with him. If you were to say, choose one out of all of them, I think it would be him. And I think he's got such a great range. Yeah. You know, he's made so many great dramas, but so many, I mean, and he's also the guy that invented the summer blockbuster. Yeah. 
and you know, I would say accidentally, but still, when you watch something like the same guy that made Schindler's List, that made Jaws, that made Munich, mm-hmm. made Close e. Encounters, e. E. T. E. T. It's it's really insane the body of work that he's been able to put together. Um, yeah. Well, we ha- we're running out of time. I want to thank you so much for coming on before we get to our last question. Again, where can we find you in your new show? Uh, you can find me on YouTube at Matthew D. Marsden. Excellent. And then uh, where else? And yeah, that's that's perfect. And then uh, Reacher as well as on Amazon right now? Yeah, Reacher is still on Amazon. I did the first series, not right. the second series. But uh, but yeah, that was great to go into so that. just watch season one. <laughs> You've heard it yeah. here first. And Matt, where again we can find you? Uh, at Matt McClowry on all platforms and mattmcclowry.com and usually on the road with you quite often. Very cool. And now we bring you to the end of the world. All right. You cannot say Rocky or Rambo. Mm -hmm. What is your favorite Sylvester Stallone movie? That's not Rocky or Rambo? Uh, Cobra. No, 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 no. Over the top. Over the top. Number easily over the top. Oh, man. That's a good one. Okay. Oh, okay. Ken. Spy Kids 4. Is he in that? I think he's like every character in it. Is he really? One of them. I gotta he's watch like- it again. <laughs> okay. Uh, that's hard. Oh, uh, I know. I would also say my favorite Sylvester Stallone directed movie. He's only in for a second. Uh, Nineteen eighty three, staying alive. I yes. apologize, bar none. That's uh, it's about dancing. It's a Saturday Night uh, Fever sequel. It's just a Rocky movie with white out for the boxing parts. It's incredible. I yeah, it re- it. you made me watch it. Yeah, and I also directing the movie in tassels was yes, amazing. yes, indeed. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a, it's a visual. Oh yeah, it gosh. really is something. <laughs> Uh, for me, Cobra. I think I like. I love Cobra. Cobra's so good. I'm gonna go with. I don't care how cheesy anybody thinks it is, and yes, there is a, a homoerotic level to it that's absurd. But Tango and Cash. Mm-hmm. Tango and Cash is it, great. It's such a fun movie. Uh, that's what I got to go with. Tango. What, what, what's the name of the girl now? Uh, it was Terry in- Hatcher. Terry. Oh, dude, she's she's smoking. Oh my in that god. Film. Dude. She also is one of those strippers who has a talent and never gets naked that only exists in movies. <laughs> yes, exactly. <Yeah. laughs> well, everybody, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, join us next week. Thank you. You've been one of my thank favorite you guests. Very much. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you. Again, thank you so much, everybody. We'll be back next week. Good night.